Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, how do I showcase that I am a good backend developer? So let's get into it. Well, I can imagine that as a backend developer it's tiresome to hear about all these uh, well, front-end related development things that you can do in order to enhance your portfolio and make you know, a show of that you actually know your stuff. But in this video I will focus on our, us back-end developers and see if we can figure something out for you. So I will make a claim and the claim that I will make is that when you are a back-end developer you have a different set of requirements or the perception is that you will have a different set of skills or a different way of being than a front-end developer. What's interesting is that you can actually use this sort of, well, it's not completely unfounded because it tends to be that backend developers focus on different things and are good at different things as opposed to front-end developers. I don't think that that is always true. I think it's kind of like saying that all programmers are socially inept or that all programmers have a, you know, a shirt with a chest pocket and a little calculator and some pens and big glasses. I mean, it's just a stereotype, but to a point it is true. One thing we can probably agree on is that when it comes to backend development, you are for the most part being evaluated a lot more on how clever you are. Like uh, there is this undertone that backend developers are smart and that they have clever ideas. And what's interesting about this is that you can actually use this. This, by, the, by far, the most common way that you're going to be showcased to people within a company when you're actually being presented, you're going to be faced with some type of code test and they're going to look at rep like products that you're making and so forth. Now for a front-end developer, this, like the part when they're actually looking at your portfolio and things of this nature is going to be very oriented around, as you can probably imagine, the UI of some sort, making good showcase applications, building stuff that makes some graphical impression on people. But what can you then do as a backend developer? Well, what a lot of backend back developers do, which I think is a mistake and I'll tell you why, is that they build a similar sort of thing. They build to-do applications or they build a REST, like a toy REST API or something like that. They start doing server-side work and try to build things to showcase fairly simple applications. Now the mistake with this is that it's not clever. It's not perceived to be clever, because remember, a front-end developer will be evaluated based on their understanding of, say, graphical design and being able to use the correct tools and all of that stuff. But as a back-end developer, you're going to do very much the same sort of thing. But imagine that the people who are evaluating, you know, evaluating you are also going to be very technical people most of the time. And how do you impress a technical person? Well, if you build a toy REST API with some basic endpoints that someone can curl a little bit, that's not really clever. It's not really impressive. Like, nobody's going to you know, go, wow, that's pretty cool. And the same thing goes for you know, a MVC application. Okay, you can build a website, like a server-side rendered website or a React application, things of this nature. Uh, although that is relevant, it is not going to give people the impression that, wow, this person is kind of clever because that's what you're going for. You want them to feel this tiny, tiny little thing that, oh, this, this is kind of interesting. That you achieve by being clever. Now, how can you showcase that you are clever? Well, I'll give you an example. So a developer comes to me, like I've actually done a few reviews. So one developer sends, has sent me a code review for a standard CRUD application. It's basically just a very simple full blog post forum type of thing where you can input a blog post of some sort. There are some comments and everything is using Bootstrap, Mon uh, Mongoose Node for the server, Mongoose for the, uh, for the database interactions and all that. It's like a, the most standard applica application you can imagine in the JavaScript ecosystem. I look, th look it through, nothing major there. Another person sends me a plugin he built to be able to make like an extension to Sublime Text where he can actually click links and go to specific um, files based on just clicking those links. Or at the path in the imports. Which one is clever? Which one do you think I got excited about? 
Well, it's not the standard, standard blog thing, because that's what every single person is building as a beginner. Now the Sublime Text, Sublime Text plugin, that is interesting. It may not be the most useful thing in the world, but it doesn't have to be. It has to just be clever. Same thing goes for a person builds a, a small CLI that allows him to basically find dead code within, say, or unused variables and unused references in CSS. That's also clever. It's not a standard CRUD application, something that every single person is building. So go, I, what I will argue is that if you contribute, like if you make these small little libraries and you showcase that you understand that you, uh, that you, that you understand how to make yourself more productive or you understand business value, this sort of stuff, and write things that are as close to production level as possible, then you don't, I, that is something that will impress other developers. Technical people will be impressed by these quirky little cool useful things that you can make. There are tons of these where you can build, like if you can build your own, I don't know, ESLint plugin, uh, your own linters. You can do all kinds of sm these, like, uh, th these sorts of things where you can showcase that you are clever. Another person built a Slack bot, which was pretty cool, where it integrated to their de de deployment pipeline at work. So they could just from Slack send a command to that bot and it would respond and give, like, basically ping all of the services in the system and tell them if everything was up. And it would alert if something went down. One made a reminder bot that made sure that they had an internal, you know, they have an internal rotation for certain tasks and, you know, solving bugs and stuff like that. And all it did was to take a list of people and it would remind people at a given interval that, hey, it's your turn this week to be that person or do that thing. These are clever things. It's not a standard REST API. That's boring as all fuck. I'm sorry to say, nobody cares. Like, it is going to showcase that you know how to write some code but if you want your portfolio to truly stand out as a back-end developer you have to get a little bit clever it doesn't have to be the next i don't know webpack or next maven or like take whatever super tool that you know that's super famous that's you like you whichever that's not what it's about it's about you showcasing that you have like that you're clever because you mean using create react app as an example that's not you being clever that's you knowing how to use somebody else's tool that's not clever you have to think for yourself and you have to show through your portfolio that you are the sort of person that can come with clever solutions to things that are relevant to technical people if you can do that you will impress people you will impress quite a lot of people so what i want you to take away from this is that if you want to create a powerful portfolio as a back-end developer, you have to showcase that you are clever. You don't have to make big super tools or anything like that. You just have to prove through your portfolio that you understand the daily tasks of technical people. If you can create some plugins to your own text editor or IDE, something like that, or linters or things of this nature that will help you write better software, that's a great thing. Or if you can create convenience tools for common tasks like the Slack bot thing, these things, they stand out. These are the sorts of things that other developers kind of go, okay, yeah, I can, that's, that's pretty cool actually. Nobody cares about the, the REST API because that's like everyday boring stuff. You don't have to do this. I'm not saying that it's bad to showcase that you understand REST APIs and things of this nature. You should probably have a few of those projects, but don't bet everything on that. Because what you're going for is to have that, give that sensation to another technical person that this person is kind of clever. Have a great day.